Testing, testing, one, two. Oh, Lord. I know. It's been a while. There's been a lot going on in my life recently. One of those things being the blessing of uh, our beautiful baby girl, Raiden. I would plop her up real quick, but she's asleep in the next room with mom, so. We gotta be kinda quiet on this one. So I'd mentioned this movie in my child- So I'd mentioned this movie in my childhood trauma video. I saw it way back when I was a kid because my dad had told me that this was the scariest movie ever made. At least he was under that impression. I remember going to like some random video stores with my family. My parents were looking for something. I asked them what, and my dad said the scariest movie ever made. But eventually they found the movie. At least they think they did. They were kind of unsure when they bought it. Even after they watched it, they were like, eh, I don't think that was it. But regardless, the movie they bought was Demonia. And eventually we all watched the movie together as a family. And we have not stopped making fun of that movie to this day. Demonia is a 1990 horror film directed by Lucio Fulci. If I'm saying his name wrong, I'm sorry. Anyway, I'm assuming this is gonna be one of my quicker movie reviews, even though I'm usually wrong when I predict that, but that's my guess because half of this movie is just so damn uninteresting. But trust me when I say this, that this is a film that needs to be talked about. Demonia is a 1990 supernatural thriller about a group of archaeologists in Sicily. Come on, hear me out. The movie opens up with a bunch of Robin Hoods dragging nuns into some temple and nailing them to crosses. And the reason why they're doing this is because one of them is probably Valak. This movie's part of the Conjuring universe, by the way. Honestly, I'm not even that far off. They're supposed to be demonic nuns. And I get why the townspeople are pissed. You know, they wouldn't want these devil worshippers with question marks at their local supermarket. It's just distracting, especially for Italians. You think we got enough torches, guys? It's a little dark. There's only a full moon eight inches from the window. It's done. Come. The version of the movie that I am watching is an English dub. And no, it's not because I'm uncultured or couldn't be fucked to read a few lines. It's because this version of the movie is that much better because the voice acting is God tier. And don't let me confuse you with my state of the art sarcasm. The movie's shit regardless. It's almost like it doesn't matter if you watch it in the English dub or in Italian because dog shit acting is dog shit acting. Watching this in Italian does not save it. Meet Liza. She has beautiful eyes and she loves participating in sweaty seances. And oh look, she just happens to have a vision of the thing we just watched 500 years later. <laughs> Holy shit, we need a doctor stat. I think I heard her skull crack. She might be paralyzed. Is anybody gonna do shit? <laughs> or she's fine. Maybe they're not worried considering you hit the ground like my husky does when she wants to sleep. What happened? How did I get here? You fainted. I brought you home. You. <laughs> I mean, sure, you performed CPR and prevented her lungs from filling with blood, but you. you're fucking gross. This is her archaeology professor, Paul. And this scene just spells the movie out for you through dialogue in the least subtle way. Also, I don't even want to bother asking how he even got her. Did one of these nut jobs decide her emergency contact was a random guy who studies artifacts, not the paramedics? He also insinuates he's in her house because he then tells her to get ready for the trip and then he leaves. I'll pick you up. You just thought that was cool to bring her back to her house, tuck her in and change her into her PJs. Not to mention, he doesn't even seem like a nice guy because he ends up just talking shit to her, telling her to cut the shit with the seances. This guy's raising more question marks than the angry townspeople. Bars. Beautiful Sicily, where this group of archeologists have come to study ancient Greek culture. Nothing like some warm whiskey to cool me off after, uh, what? Hammering one spike in the ground? Robbie! 
Look at you. Why in God's name are you always in the dirt? I don't know. Maybe because he's with a bunch of fucking archaeologists. Just for no reason, this guy is such a prick when Liza questions anything. He's also awkwardly very forward with her, and his advances always seem unwelcomed. I don't even know if this is written in the script or if the actor is just genuinely uncomfortable around this guy. So the mayor of the town they have visited stops by because, you know, he, he ain't got shit else to do. Try and stop the mafia? Pfft. You guys digging rocks? On my way. And he tells Paul that the locals aren't taking well to their arrival, saying that they don't want to assist them in digging around the area. What's new? They're still up there digging. Why are they doing it? Why are they such fools? Don't they know that the dead must be left in peace? Especially that woman. They won't. In that case, the worst is yet to come. How do you know about her? How does anybody know about her? You're the fucking butcher for crying out loud. How are you receiving this intel? I love how this movie is in such a hurry, but it still somehow drags ass. So these two speak to a fellow archeologist who has already endured the hostility of the locals. He says the reason for the defensive behavior is because there is a monastery in the ruins by where the site is, and the locals do not want people snooping around there. And this is how their conversation ends. See you later, Paul. All right. Is this town just filled with alcoholics? Is that the secret in the monastery? It's just a big detox center? So adventurous little Liza, after just hearing that they don't want people fucking around with the monastery, goes to fuck with the monastery. <laughs> well, they really went all out with the props. So I guess props to the props team. <laughs> Wait, what? It's real? Those aren't props. Yup, in an interview with this on-screen douche, he said that they actually filmed in the cellar-like grotto of a church filled with the real remains of people in Sicily. The skeletons you see on screen were actual humans who are probably throwing a tantrum in the afterlife because their legacy is now boiled down to this. Then all of a sudden, it's Mr. Green from Green Meats. Butcher. Don't you dare try to interrupt the work we're doing here. We have the authority of your government and we intend to have it respected. Is that clear? You're going to pay for what you're doing. I swear to it. It's the word of Turi de Simone, the butcher of Santa Rosalia. I place Turi de Simone in defense mode. The butcher of Santa Rosalia? Yeah, I got him in a starter pack. Isn't that crazy? Yeah, it's fucking nuts. I love how he doesn't even force her out, he just leaves. Anyway, Liza has a random vision of a nun, sees a mural of a nun on the wall, and we, the audience, hear a heartbeat. I don't know if she does too. But all this apparently points her to demolish this wall, and it leads to the area from the beginning of the movie. Liza discovers the bodies and runs out and runs into, you guessed it, this fucking stalker. She tells him what she saw and he yells at her and manhandles her and then caresses her face. Weinstein, is that you? Now. The fun begins. But let me quickly remind you that if you plan to watch the first 25 minutes of this movie with even an ounce of drowsiness, you will not make it. This movie's fucking boring. And even now that the death start, it's still cinematic tempurpedic. I swear my first watch, I was dozing like hell. Anyway, remember the guy who drinks like this? Yeah, he comes into his boat realizing someone has broken in. But who was it? Was it one of the angry locals? Was it the butcher? Or the topless ghost that appears with a harpoon? Now I'm not gonna spoil it, but <laughs> let's move on. Who likes three minutes of filler? I like three minutes of filler. This is the only thing of worth in that time span. And if that wasn't bad enough, we have this horrible dream sequence to follow it up. I can't stop. I must go. Please, Paul. I must. Let me go. No! Liza then watches the nuns suffer in real time, which is like the third time we've seen this scene. She goes into town looking for records and everybody's dub lines terribly match up in length with the original lines, so 
All the deliveries are just awkward as balls. Excuse me, miss. Behind the church, there is a sign on the door. Thank you so much. You can't much. miss it. Miss? Miss? Yes, I'm looking for the chronicles of Santa Rosalia. Santa Rosalia? All the chronicles for Santa Rosalia are there. But no one's ever shown the slightest interest in them. You're the first person who's ever asked. Seems like she's the first person in this library in general. So there's pages of the town's history book missing. This lady mm. shows up. Liza sternly addresses her as if she couldn't just be a random lady looking for a book. Who's there? Speak softly. If anyone sees me talking with you, I'm dead. Why would anyone? There is no time to explain. I know what you are looking for. So this lady has the secrets we've been yearning for. But first, another motherfucking campfire song. You know I said this English dub makes the movie a million times better? It's because of lines like this. Paul the prick comes out and spoils the party and tells everyone to shut the hell up. Then we hear the most epic mic drop of 2019. <laughs> Well, I think you're a shit too. I honestly should just end the video right there because it probably won't get worse than that. But it does. Liza has another dream sequence. I've had a few of those since starting. And this scene basically says that she's now possessed, I'm assuming. I just want to say, um, I'm more than halfway through the movie and the breast, th the best thing in this movie has been this paranormal paranipple. These paranipples. That's hands down been the best thing uh, in this movie so far. Hey, you guys remember those two drunks I talked about? No? It's because I didn't talk about them. Because they have zero qualities to them, except this one's a drunk with an Irish accent. And I don't even know what the hell this guy does. They go into the ruins to drink while they're already intoxicated. They hear laughs and see the shadow of what looks like a doll. Then we get another death scene. I think there's a party going on. Hey, hey, I see you. You can't get away from me. Uh, uh, ah! Kevin, what happened? Kevin, where are you? I love how this guy just completely blacked out when his friend just inches away, fell, and yelled to his demise. Even just the impact alone should have been loud enough to alert him. But nope, I'm gonna jump on a trampoline to come save you! <laughs> Leave those dumb drunks in the pit of spikes so we never have to listen to another campfire song. Fulci throws himself in the film as a head detective investigating these murders. I'm not even mad, he might be the best actor in this whole film. So Liza goes to visit this crazy lady and oh look, she's a, she's a crazy cat lady. Take you a long time to write up these characters? She gives the backstory to the nuns who were killed and she walks around the table during the conversation and I know piss about cinematography, right? But I can tell you what's bothersome to look at during a movie and it's these fucking shots. This is so fucking ugly. Some townsfolk even talked about certain wild orgies which were supposed to have taken place beneath the nunnery. No, the soundtrack is great. Tremendous. Turn it up a little bit in my headphones. Ah! It's orgy time. Anyway, this guy's getting deep-throated, then she returns the favor. Then they show one of the nuns having a kid from getting preggers, and then they burn the kid. Oh my gosh! It's, uh, it's, it's ashes. It's ashes. I hate this actor. I hate this actor. Her face is not in focus. This looks like a home movie. Nobody cares. <laughs> Inspector! Inspector! Yeah. Hey. <sighs> Has this guy ever heard of a second take? You're literally the director. The guy who just fucked up was you. Yell cut! Do it again! Do you remember that guy who died from a harpoon? Yeah, they find his head in the water. Inspector! For God's sake, look! Oh wow, that's pretty hardcore. I now enjoy this film. Cat Lady returns to her residence and I have to give it to Fulci. Uh, he keeps one-upping himself with these death scenes. You see, Cat Lady's cats have gone rogue. <coughs> possessed by evil spirits. Some might call them demyonic. 
<laughs> no, but seriously, these bastards go bonkers and start feline at the lady's face. <laughs> This makeup's really good. It looks genuinely terrifying. <laughs> is there low gravity in Sicily? Why do people collapse like this? Questo film è spazzatura. I want to learn Italian. Buongiorno. Me chiamo Gigi. Vaffanculo. Fulci talks to the local butcher, only to set up a foreshadow. I've got my own neck to look out for. Here's the steak. Good day, Inspector Carter. Good day, Tori. You dare not take my steak? <laughs> now here's the other detective talking to Paul. The detective brings up this gibberish where Paul once disagreed with one of the victims on a thingy and there's never a follow-up to this. <laughs> so the butcher goes into the ruins, tries to comedically put this wall back together. <laughs> How the hell can you sit there and tell me that this is not downright goofy at this point? I get it, no one shoots 100% from the line. Everybody's got duds. This is a dud. This is Jared Dudley. This is the Dudley boys. Da -da 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 -da. The butcher returns back to his shop, but then... Remember that foreshadow I was talking about? There are people who deserve that kind of treatment. I'd hold my tongue if I were you. Tongues can wound people badly, but I can't kill them. I've got my own neck to look out for. I'd hold my tongue if I were you. Tongues can wound people badly, but I can't kill them. Fuchi shows up to the butcher shop where they tell him that the butcher is missing. All these cops on the scene and not one has bothered to check the freezer. Really? No one here has ever watched Goodfellas? Quite an eye you got there, detective. Did you also notice the dead body? Because that didn't seem to interest you at all. Sir, the Taunts people are angry and they're coming this way with weapons to destroy the monastery. Okay, let's calmly evacuate. Then for absolutely no reason whatsoever, literally none, Robbie goes missing. Remember Robbie, the kid who likes to play in dirt and ironically is about to be six feet under? Let me tell you this, if there was one scene I remembered from this movie, it is this scene. Robbie! Robbie, don't worry, I'm on my- No! Robbie! Don't move, Robbie! No! Don't move, Robbie! Papa! No! You know that little shit never did listen. No! Some fucking idiot at my apartments has like a mini windmill on his porch, which needs fucking a gallon of WD-40 at this point because it just squeaks every fucking time there's wind. Paul, being Paul, has to find Liza before they leave. So he runs up to the ruins and sees a ghost nun, so he approaches with caution. Robbie's mom is unpacking, hears the evil nun laugh, and... Robbie, did you use his body as a hammock? What the fuck is this? Angry townspeople. Liza, Liza. Miss.
I'm sorry. Why does it seem like she was all the way in Pittsburgh, but when she turned around, she was in stabbing distance? Also, well deserved, you ass crack. Oh yeah, this was Liza, by the way. She's possessed, like I said. I think, while simultaneously vomiting. Then she gets hung up on the cross somehow. And the townspeople burn all the bodies again, including her. And their fucking dubs are hilarious through this scene. What's going on? What do you mean? You set a bunch of corpses on fire in an enclosed dust tornado, you morons. This movie should end with a kaboom, but it doesn't, sadly. Paul is alive and he's here to save Liza. She's no longer possessed, don't worry. She probably just fainted like last time. I don't get it. And I never will. You suck. So the director of this film, Lucio Fulci, coined the godfather of gore, is an icon to lovers of horror and gore. And I'm sorry, but that still doesn't change the fact that this movie sucks. In an effort to not piss off the Fulci nation, uh, I read up on some blogs. Fulci obviously has a massive filmography. It shows you all of them on the little sheet in the Demonia DVD. But I wanted to see how his other films compared to this one. I saw that this was one of his much later films. I read a few different pages and I saw that the movie Zombie was pretty high up in everybody's list. So I bought it and watched it. And it was miles ahead of Demonia. It's still no masterpiece. You're not gonna feed me that crap because he's an icon and because it's an old movie. There's plenty of shit wrong with that movie, but I was way more into it than I was into this fucking thing. Basically, if you're into this type of shit, you're into it. You'll love it and you probably hate my opinion. That's okay. I read up a little on Demonia too and it seems like people either love or hate it, but you're most likely a Fulci fan if you even give a rat's ass about it. If you enjoy the creepy atmosphere and the death scenes, that's totally cool. If you think that saves the movie, that's not cool. No disrespect intended to the director. I'm sure if I watched more of his classic films, I would probably be more impressed. But this movie is a hunk of shit. And honestly, I wouldn't want to have it any other way. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a like. It is the easiest way to support me. Subscribe because I have more content coming your way. Also, I know this is fucking random, but I now have a supporter creator code in Fortnite. So if you still play Fortnite and you spend money on things you probably shouldn't, use my creator code, Mr-GG. Come on, Ninja has like six Ferraris. He doesn't need it. And also shout out to CC Lena for uh, retweeting my last video tweet. As always, I am Mr. GG and I am out. Leave those dumb trunks in the pit of spy eggs So we never have to listen to another campfire song I'm happy that this movie sucks so much. I'm happy I could make this review. I know it may sound silly, but this movie being such a meme with my family, especially with my pops, it brings me great joy to shit all over this film. I've been gone for a month, and aside from the fact that obviously we were blessed with a beautiful baby girl, um... On the same morning that our baby was born, I was at the hospital saying goodbye to my pops. That's why I've been away for the, for this long. And that's why I wanted to make this video. I'm sure he would have loved to hear me crap all over this film. This one's dedicated to you, Pop.